If you've ever had the misfortune to log on to twitter.com, you'll probably have seen that sometimes it can be a pretty rough place. Although social media provides unprecedented opportunities for connection and communication with each other, with the rise of Twitter's popularity has come increased exposure to some of the worst of humanity to its users. Many of these users have since left for kinder spaces. However, there are pockets of beauty that persist within Twitter's many bad tweets. And one of those is Cat Zone. I've been a fan of this boy zone for many years now, and my own cat Bilbo has grown from a dozen friends to nearly 75,000. Let's talk about cat Twitter. Cats have long been popular on the internet. From feline ASCII art to lol cats to viral videos here on YouTube to Nyan Cat, these animals and characters have provided for incredible creativity and joy online and have given rise to increasingly complicated and meaningful ways of communication across languages and cultures on the internet. Whether it was a text macro from 2006 that your auntie shares like clockwork on the family WhatsApp or in the complicated and nuanced lore and style of modern cat accounts on Twitter, feline friends provide voices and language to people for online communication. This can be as simple as using cat pictures as the equivalent of emoji or emoticons, to as complicated as providing safe ways for processing grief, trauma and abuse. Let's start with the basics. Cat Twitter is a loose collection of accounts on the platform which pretend to be written by cats usually a singular animal, and operated usually by a single user or a couple, usually their owners. They mostly tweet in English, although this is far from universal, and they mostly employ various ways of augmenting or modifying the languages that they use to paint their cat's personality, perhaps to portray the limitations of feline paws on human keyboards, or to demarcate in-character and out-of-character content. Oh God. I feel like I only have like two cat voices and I've gotten two Bilbo tweets. Have a nice evening. Because I love you. I am just a little creature. That's it. I cannot change this. Cleanliness is next to cleanliness. Some of the larger cat accounts have been in operation for a number of years, and indeed cat accounts featuring individual cats have been around as long as the platform itself. Pepito, a beautiful black cat from France, has had a Twitter account since 2011, and most of his tweets feature webcam photos of him leaving or returning to his home through his cat flap. His fans appropriately wish him safety on his voyages or a warm welcome home, en masse every time a tweet is triggered. The connection people have to Pepito is through the real-time nature of his photos. When you can see his head, he's coming home, and when you can see his tail, he's on his way out to explore. Other cat accounts have portrayed a cat's entire feline fable, telling the story from the moment they're born or adopted till the moment they go over the rainbow. This introduces the first of the emotions I'm going to talk about today, grief. Much like people's own cats, or the cats of friends, when a cat you've known online for some time dies, there can be a sharing of that collective grief across many online friends. This brings us to the first uncomfortable reality of cat Twitter. The friends and followers that they amass, being human, are much more likely to outlive them than the other way around. An example of this was seen in April 2019, when large cat account personality PP of PP's Playhouse passed away and cat Twitter and its massive audience fell into a collective mourning, with many people expressing genuine, sincere, and significant grief. When PP passed away, a small part of tens of thousands of people's lives 
passed away too. My own cat, Bilbo, is a five-year-old orange boy, well known for being round and kind and very articulate in communicating what he wants. During his participation in Online Gamer, HBomber's charity fundraising stream in January of this year, he has been recognised in the Scottish Parliament as a Northern Irish trans rights icon and campaigner. He has a podcast with a listenership of thousands and he is most cherished by me personally as an affectionate and he is most and he is most cherished by me personally as an affectionate and charismatic cat who shows his love and communicates his boundaries. He's improved my life enormously over the last five years of him being here and in many ways I wouldn't be the same person I am today without him. It felt natural to share him with the world. From initially posting photos of him on my personal Twitter account, it quickly made sense to move that to his own account once the people's wishes for this became clear. Since May 2017, he's been finding his own style and niche and has amassed, as I've said, nearly 75,000 followers at the time of recording, over 60,000 of those in 2019. His followers range from people who occasionally check in to like some photos, to people who interact with him daily, to people who send him long and direct messages, to people who even cross into the offline space to send him physical posts and packages. To help write this video, I contacted many cat Twitter accounts to get some answers from them about questions that I had. Why they started their accounts, why they kept going, and what sort of people were they? I also published an online survey aimed at the followers of cat Twitter accounts and have received hundreds upon hundreds of responses from people saying what cat accounts they love, why they love them, and what cat Twitter means to them and how it affects their well-being and lives. This piece is written to document the importance and weight of cat Twitter, and also the silliness, joy and love inherent within. What follows is a tale of mostly marginalized people finding outlets online through the pets they love and a tale of countless hundreds of thousands more, finding everything from cute snoots that they happen to see occasionally, to pathways to real and lasting emotional healing and recovery. I've anonymized a lot of what I'm going to talk about tonight for the privacy of the people involved. A lot of cat Twitter account operators are people who would be extremely vulnerable if doxxed or outed, and I don't want to end the stories of cat Twitter accounts by telling them. Although I had an inkling before reaching out, what surprised me most about talking with other cat Twitter accounts was the sheer diversity of the people who were running them. Although there was a clustering of people aged 18 to 24, as expected, there were also younger and indeed much older people tweeting as their cats, which is, is humorous to me. The oldest person who responded to me was 77 years old. It was also notable the enormous representation, indeed a significant majority, of people who were lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer and transgender, of all ages who were involved. Also, the high number of disabled people. Of 34 cat accounts who responded to me, the majority said that they had a disability or chronic illness. And most of these specifically mentioned this as relevant to why they find cat Twitter useful. It provided an accessible route to creativity and communication. What many account operators matched with my own reasons for sharing Bilbo with the world, that they loved their cats and their charisma so much that they wanted others to feel similar joy. Others found the pre-existing cacophony of cat content as something they'd love to be involved with and joined with their own cats. For many pet owners generally, they talk with their animals regularly anyways, and so cat accounts can be as if the cat could respond verbally themselves Others like me have day jobs that can be extremely heavy and draining emotionally and find cat Twitter to be a low energy creative outlet or hobby for when they're exhausted or ill. I'm a trans rights professional and with the state of anti-trans activism around the world at the moment, it's nice and indeed important to have something that allows detachment from that and for joy. I asked these account operators how being involved with cat Twitter affected them emotionally, and three quarters of people said that it helped them a lot. Nobody said that their emotions were hurt, and one person said their emotions weren't affected. When asked to explain, it was incredible to see the level of meaning and insight that many account operators placed on their participation. 
Some described how, like me, it provided relief from stressful work. But others used it as a way to deal with abuse going on in their lives or with terminal illness and indeed with the death of loved ones, human or feline. Some find that cat Twitter restored their faith in humanity because the interactions that they had with other people through those accounts were the kindest and most positive that they'd ever had online. Several said how they'd made deep and meaningful friendships offline through cat Twitter and that their presence online had enabled them to be more social and outgoing when away from keyboard too. When you're struggling with something in life, it helps to have an outlet for that, to be able to talk to someone about your problems and to have a friendly face to turn to when things get bad. I have a PO box where people can send me physical mail or send Bilbo physical mail. And in the 18 months that I've had it, I've received hundreds of letters, cards, and packages addressed to my cat. Some of them have been simple cards saying hello. Some of them have been multiple page handwritten letters spilling the heart of the writer out and asking the cat for comfort. Despite being sent to a human's PO box, they were addressed to the cat, written for the cat, and worded as if whispered to that cat while they were lying on their chest, while they cried at night. I've been astounded by the beauty and emotion that goes into a lot of the letters that we receive. And they've been an important thing to consider when presenting Bilbo online. Many other cat account operators said that the messages they received are the most intense part of the process, both positively and negatively. Many said that they are inundated with pictures of other people's cats, celebratory news and messages of love. And many also said that they received messages of grief about the loss of their own cats, about homesickness, and indeed about how their cat account has helped people deal with mourning, loss, abuse and suffering. Again, the theme of using cat Twitter accounts as a vector for emotional outpouring was common and the depth of the messages received was outstanding. So let's hear from the people who follow cat Twitter accounts. I received 450, I can't believe it was that many. I received 450 responses to an open survey that I held before writing this video, which will inform what I'm about to talk about. First of all, the vast majority of those respondents were from either the US and Canada region or from the UK and Ireland, which perhaps isn't that surprising given my own online reach. Other countries of note include a sizable cluster from the Philippines, a bunch from Brazil, a bunch from Argentina, and a group in Qatar. The vast majority of people were in their late teens and in their 20s, but the ages of respondents covered every age between 13 and 70. I didn't ask specifically about gender or sexual orientation, but of people who self-disclosed throughout their answers, more people said that they were women than other genders, and there was a huge representation again of LGBTI people and of disabled people. The reasons people enjoy cat Twitter are widely varied. Whereas some people casually like seeing cat photos on their timelines and that's it, some have deeply personal reasons for following or getting involved in more significant ways. Indeed for Pepito, who I mentioned earlier, there are people who interact with the majority of his content. And there are people who follow up on Bilbo's every tweet and check how he's doing, maybe three or four times a week. What's become more popular recently is people following a cluster of cat accounts and specifically enjoying the reactions between them. For example, where some cats wish Maya, hydration cat, a speedy recovery from her medical problems, or where Bilbo and Kenny say hello. The crossover episode I always wanted is something I see in Bilbo's notifications constantly when this happens. One cat being retweeted by friends and then that leading them into the maze of cat Twitter was something that around 100 respondents said was their introduction in my survey. However, the most common thing that people said was that cat Twitter provided them an escape for an increasingly daunting and scary world. A growing number used cat Twitter as a way to break away from intimidating and overwhelming political crises, impending global climate chaos, and the realities of their local areas. Much has been written recently about the concept of climate grief, 
That's the mental health impacts of knowing that humanity is at increasingly grave risk from runaway climate change, particularly on young people. That grief and associated political issues is a major reason why people find refuge with the Twitter cats. I know that's wild, but that's what people said. Lots of people have mental health problems generally. That's hardly revelatory. Plenty of people said specifically that they found cat Twitter to be particularly soothing for their mental health and indeed sought it out regularly for relief and an emotional boost. Folks with severe depression, suicidal thoughts and other difficult mental health problems voyaged to cat Twitter to calm down, to ground themselves and to escape for a few minutes. The depth to which people went into this was truly touching and it's clearly an important part of self-care for and mental health management for a significant number of people. Others missing their own pets who lived elsewhere or who had passed away found cat Twitter to be soothing for mourning and homesickness. For people who struggle to form new friendships after moving away from home for the first time, cat Twitter can be a conversation starter with new people and it was particularly touching to see that it sparked deep and meaningful friendships between a significant number of people. Overall, nearly 60% of people said that cat Twitter had helped their well-being a lot, with another nearly 40% saying that it helped their well-being a little. For something so fundamentally silly, that's really lovely. A small number said they weren't emotionally affected by cat Twitter, and two said it hurt them a little. Cat Twitter isn't immune to representing and replicating some of the problems of Twitter as a whole, and of internet communication forums as a whole as well, so let's explore that a little now. Twitter has historically been quite inaccessible. Accessibility features have come quite slowly and uptake has been far from unanimous, with features like image descriptions having to be specifically opted into by individual users, for example. A lot of cat Twitter accounts use garbled language to communicate, my own Bilbo included. That can be difficult for a large number of Twitter users to read especially blind and visually impaired people who use screen reading software, dyslexic people, learning disabled people, and folks whose first language isn't English. Different accounts have dealt with this in different ways. Some use completely plain language, some use image descriptions, and some particularly new accounts tend to use extremely garbled text with high use of diacritics and other linguistic features that make reading particularly difficult. There has been a general move towards making cat Twitter more accessible, particularly as so many account operators are themselves disabled, but the current state of access is poor. Like other areas of society and culture, I think cat Twitter should be as accessible as possible, and I'm hoping that we can find a better ways of making that happen. Bilbo uses image descriptions now and is slowly improving his English, but remains inaccessible for many. Twitter's automatic translation Features fail to translate context and slang, never mind the result of cat paws on a smartphone keyboard. Now there's other types of accessibility too, particularly financial accessibility and resources. Now every cat Twitter account is free to follow, but it does require a discrete amount of time and resources to run an account. And so people who have their energy or time stretched thin are much less likely to be able to participate. This is true of Twitter as a whole, and also of unpaid creative work as a whole too. Now, one way to bring in some income from cat Twitter is from merchandising, which allows creators to sell items featuring their cat accounts to bring in some bacon. This in and of itself is a time and resources investment and requires either existing creative skills or the resources to commission artists and logistics folks to produce, as well as in some cases, the time equipment and skills to manage logistics, production, shipping, and taxes that merchandising involves. 2019 is the first year that I've had a salary for my human rights work, something I've been doing since 2013. And since launching Bilbo's Twitter account in 2017, I've brought in much needed money for me to survive on through merchandising. Indeed, Bilbo Merch paid my rent all the way up to late 2018 and was crucial for me to be able to support myself until I was able to gain a wage. However, that was difficult time-consuming work with a pretty vertical learning curve and frustrating and slow progress to begin with. It's something that many people don't have the resources to commit to and is fairly difficult to make profitable. However, modern merchandising platforms like Redbubble and Bonfire 
make this a, a lot more doable for first-time creators, and it's what allowed me to get up and running without the capital costs to buy equipment or large print runs of stickers and badges, for example. Still, supporting your living expenses through cat Twitter is the exception and not the rule, like here on YouTube. Most cat accounts who do sell merchandising make a modest sum, but that in no way would fairly pay them for their time in running the accounts, and I don't know anyone meeting all of their costs through it. However, for me, Bilbo merchandising has been very successful, and since I don't need that money anymore due to having a salary, about 90% of income from Bilbo merch goes directly to the artists who design it, and Ashley, a friend in Belfast who's done amazing work um, doing the logistics and packaging work, making sure everything gets sent out on time. The rest pays for workspace, which is where we currently are, other fees, and I see about 5% in the end. This is not the norm. It is the exception, the rare exception. Support those smaller creators if you can. Is it ethical to post your cat online? Now, that's not something I'm even close to being fully qualified to assess. However, there are some general areas we can explore together. When I take a photo of Bilbo, it's usually a photo of something he's doing already, with some exceptions. Whether it's him peacefully asleep or storming about the place demanding his dinner, generally his photos are descriptive rather than of prescribed activity. It's his everyday life, and a number of people responding to my survey said that they worried about the happiness of the cats on cat Twitter. They wanted to make sure that they were ha as happy, as healthy as possible, and that they were enjoying their time online. Now, there'll always be a spectrum of what cat owners find acceptable about interacting with cats. You'll find this out very quickly when your cat has... <laughs> oh, perfect. Now, there'll always be a spectrum of what cat owners find acceptable when interacting with cats. You quickly find this when yours has a big following on Twitter. There's one guy that is adamant that every time Bilbo yells, he's saying that he wants to go to the vet. Um, there's also a large spectrum of what cats themselves tolerate and enjoy. Some cats hate being cuddled, whereas my own boy is the opposite. Bilbo has a thing for armpits and will cuddle anyone I'm friendly with. Some cats are fine wearing a bow tie, whereas others will give you an armdectomy for even suggesting it. Generally, cat Twitter account operators keep their content within the bounds of what's comfortable for the cat, perhaps with the exception of when they're being introduced to new toys, new equipment, or new food. I've seen relatively few exceptions to this and very few cats being distressed on cat Twitter. Cat fans on the internet are usually quick to point out when cats are uncomfortable. This is perhaps predictable. Most cat account operators who responded to me said that they shared their cats with the world because they loved them so much and they wanted to share that love. Respondents to my follower survey also expressed concern for the owners of cat Twitter accounts. Accounts can blow up quickly and like my own experience, often to a much greater following than your own personal account. This introduces new stressors to owners like unwanted messages and attention, extremely helpful advice about their cats, and infighting among their cat's fans. It's surprising, but it happens. Although the vast majority of cat Twitter operators said that they found cat Twitter very helpful and positive to them, many worried that the increased attention, and especially the number of highly emotional and grieving messages that they were receiving, would have an impact. This wasn't a request that they stop, just to worry about there being large spikes in the numbers that they received. Again, this is a problem with large Twitter accounts generally, but the removal of a human being being directly attached to the account perhaps allows more people to be a bit more free with their expression of emotions where they wouldn't be as candid with an account with a person's face attached. Is it ethical to sell cat merch? Within the bounds of whether it's acceptable to sell anything under capitalism, most accounts with merchandising are run by marginalized people and mostly by people earning well under their locale's average income. It's much easier to establish production standards with local companies, but an account owner said that they worried about using large merchandising companies as they couldn't establish what conditions they were produced and sourced in. Finally, on ethics, having a large Twitter account inevitably fosters power dynamics between large and smaller accounts, and particularly when communicating with followers directly. Cat account owners generally said that they were careful with the interactions with followers and with the content they put out in general, 
And this is generally evident in the culture that surrounds cat Twitter and its audience. Is it ethical to open but not answer emotional direct messages from followers in mourning, despite you not having the energy or resources to deal with dozens of messages at a time? This is something that I personally struggle with quite a bit, and it's certainly something that Twitter as a whole doesn't really have an answer to right now. A heart emoji is better than nothing, but is it living up to your duty of care when people don't have access to support elsewhere in their lives? Answers on a postcard, please. A parasocial relationship is a relationship where one party considers knowing the other well in some areas, may follow them online for years, and is deeply familiar with some parts of their life, whereas the other party may not even know that they exist. Much has been written and said about parasocial relationships in the past number of years, particularly here on YouTube. And it does indeed seem that a lot of the comment and criticism does also apply to cat Twitter interactions. When you have over 50,000 Twitter followers, you inevitably can't keep up with all the notifications and interactions that you receive on a given day. And indeed, some people do become hurt when their love for their cat Twitters isn't visibly returned. When this happens, it's usually because of the sheer number of messages and inherent need to filter them out that comes into it but it can affect how people interact online. I have friends who regularly get bought drinks by people purely because they've lived with my cat Bilbo in the past, and I'm regularly traveling across the world for work and meet people for the first time who can quote Bilbo tweets verbatim, yet they have no idea who I am. It could be pretty startling. It's cool, but it can be pretty startling. Some cat account operators said that they worried about not being able to keep up with the changing and growing requests of their audiences, but were clear that their cat's well-being came before all else. Some say that they had personal rules about not responding to emotionally heavy messages unless absolutely necessary, as a way to protect their own mental health, or that they had closed their direct messages to non-mutual followers after they received a certain level of audience online. These approaches are common across many online platforms today where big accounts struggle to deal with the small and hugely numerous interactions with others. And this isn't a nuance limited to cat Twitter, or Twitter in general for that matter. In fact, few of the issues that affect cat Twitter are unique to this community. Perhaps the most important emotions communicated by the dozens of cat account operators who talk to me and the hundreds and hundreds of followers who sent in their own thoughts are love and joy. Of all the 81,000 words in those 450 responses, love and joy were the most common themes. And it's clear that these cats occupy a special place in many thousands of people's lives, even if that place is small or fleeting. Cat Twitter is growing. As more and more people become involved in the culture surrounding it generally, more and more people also sign their cats up to Twitter and show their felines off to the world. Some of these are highly original and entertaining, and some of them are very, very much a carbon copycat of existing accounts. Whereas the success of long-standing accounts may seem daunting, it's yet to be seen how this new wave of account owners apply their own streak to this community. Cat accounts in more and more languages are popping up, as are accounts with more and more niche audiences and appeals. And I think ultimately this is a very good thing. Everyone deserves an escape from this difficult and modern world. And cat Twitter offers a small form of that. We need to make sure that the cats involved are happy and loved, and are shown as a way of communicating their owner's love for them, and not exploited and stressed by the process. We need to make sure that people with terrible politics don't start using the cutesy language of cat Twitter and infiltrating it. And we need to ensure that the relatively socially powerful positions that large cat Twitter accounts like my own have are used responsibly, both on a larger scale and with interactions with individual fans and followers. We need to ensure that cat Twitter can be a loving, accepting and hopeful place. And while also not building relationships so strong that the illness or death of the cats involved is dangerously hard on their fans. Cat Twitter won't always be the way that it currently is, but I hope it maintains its humor, its love, and its carefree feel. There's no way of knowing where Cat Twitter will go in the future, how it'll adapt to a growing audience, or how it'll fit into a changing world. 
as our followings continue to expand in numbers and grow older individually, and as our cats do the same, we have many lessons yet to learn. But I'm hopeful that this little pocket of Twitter, this little warm corner of the internet, can remain a place of love, of escape, and of healing for years to come. To quote one follower, cat Twitter is the next step in human experience. So go pet a cat, go say hello to a cat, go send a cat something nice on Twitter. If this is a way we can stay happy and calm in this hectic world, let's enjoy it. As for my own boy Bilbo, I dearly hope that he will be a happy boy who enjoys his adventures for many years to come. I hope I can share his love with you and with everybody for that whole time. I'll give him a kiss. Thank you.